some hard hitting action tonight. That is true. And we are about to see more of that hard hitting action because we have our second match. We are getting started right now. And I am going to bring in our first competitor. This man is always well prepared. He is the, ooh, everyone wants to win tonight. Two out of three will advance to round two. But as we saw in that first match, it could be three out of three if we have a tie. So to my friends in the back, our competitors who are getting ready, what would that be like if all three of you advance? We are going into this thinking only two will. We'll see what happens with the votes. So please, Engine, we hope you are there still ready because this match is going to be just as exciting, if not more so than the last. To start us off, we have someone who was the, the person, the free throw specialist when free throws were first introduced in the 1979-80 season, that free throw line appeared and he was consistent and precise and landed those free throws constantly, consecutively, the three-point line. There we go, that's when they were introduced. I would like to welcome in Mr. Brian Taylor once more to the Celebrity Tournament. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? I am doing great because I get to see your wonderful face and personality again. I am so happy you were one of the competitors who was voted back into this tournament. How are you feeling about this evening? I'm feeling great about this evening. And you know I want to get to Greece. <laughs> Grandpa call me Papu, which is grandfather in Greek. <laughs> so I have to get to Greece. <laughs> that is a fantastic reason to get to Greece. Brian, do you want to win it all? I want to win it all. I'm a champion. You definitely are. You are <laughs> a champion on and off the court. <laughs> oh. And do you remember who you competed with in round one? Yeah, he was a great, great debater, great basketball player, great man. My man, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie Johnson wants you in round two, Mr. Taylor. So you better bring it tonight to advance because two will advance and our engine will be voting there on you. And you have two very worthy competitors. Oh, yeah, tough competition tonight. How are you feeling about your competition? Oh, I love competition. I'm prepared. <laughs> Brian Taylor, you are class personified. I could not agree with you more. Personally, you impressed me very much in your first match. I loved all the points you brought up. Your To Kill a Mockingbird case was poignant and powerful. I think it's one that everybody remembers. That confidence says it all. Yes, it does, Ramon. And we will see that confidence back here momentarily. Mr. Taylor, I am going to put you in the back as we introduce our next competitor. Our next competitor was part of the uh, match that kicked off this entire tournament. Lost by one to Mr. Steven Tobolowski, who is very often on people's top 10 lists. So our next competitor is no slouch. He is a producer, a gamer. He knows his sports and music. He was on one of the most groundbreaking shows ever to air. Mr. Todd Bridges, please join me on screen now. I'm here. What's up? How are you guys doing today? <laughs> I am doing great because as I told Mr. Taylor, I get to see your lovely face and personality. Oh, Mr. Taylor, I got to go against the free throw all time. That's all right. I'm coming. I'm bringing the Gary Coleman <laughs> spirit with me. He's coming to come We're going to Todd, me. If yep. I don't win, he's going to beat your kneecaps up. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle it. I only advocate staged violence, please. No. <laughs> that is. Uh, if you want to know what that comment meant, watch Paper Knife tomorrow night on the Sunday Source at eight at <laughs> seven p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. And if you missed Fab Friday, that will be back on our YouTube channel soon. We had a great block of talk shows last night. 
Mr. Todd Bridges is a genuinely kind and real human being, friend and co-host. Yeah, I'm pretty. I got pretty. I'm I'm going to work tonight. I do want to get to Greece also. So <laughs> I definitely want to get to Greece. And I don't yep. want to be catching. I don't want to be, you know, paddling my little rowboat. I want to take a nice plane right there and land in there. <laughs> I think we all... We definitely all want to get to Greece, and I know you want to win yeah. it all. Mr. Bridges has also been one of our guest judges throughout round one, and he has that amazing, amazing clip that we see in our intro all the time that shows us just how much you want to win this tournament. What would it mean to be able to be win this first ever celebrity grand tournament to both of you? That question is for both of you. To be you want to go first? <laughs> it would mean that I'm going to Greece. <laughs> and um, Papu belongs there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to go to Greece. I want to take my wife to Greece because I'm, I'm very much so into um, mm -hmm. artifacts and Ro the Roman Empire and that kind of stuff. So I want to go for educational purposes and to have fun, both, a little bit of both. That is fantastic. This is a tournament that has 119, 119 Hall of Famers, along with Oscar, Grammy, Emmy, Tony, Golden Globe, WGA, AMA, and Olympi yeah. Olympians participating. It is the biggest celebrity tournament of all time. You two are in the second chance bowl. You both may advance to round two tonight because two will advance unless we have a tie. But I also oh. have word that... Mr. Wilkins is having a few issues. We're trying to get him to sign in now, but we will. We already, we already made it to the second round. Hey, well, hey, he hey, can hey, still hey, join us. He can still go, join go. us. We in, we in, we, we in. in. Just like that. But you have prepared for this topic. He is trying to sign in. This, this hasn't happened with Mr. Wilkins before. We are live. These things do happen. I am very good with computers, so I sent him a little spy box. Oh, oh, so we can get our way on to Greece. I got to get on early. Get on the Greece. You want to win, don't no. you? <laughs> I can see it here. You both prepared for this wonderful topic, and we do not want to deprive our audience of that. So here we go. Here's the sole topic for our second match. Young people should play a vital role in humanitarian action and development around the world. They represent the majority of the population and can deliver life-saving and life-changing work within their communities every single day. Meaningful youth engagement is essential to delivering effective and principled humanitarian assistance and transforming organization for the better. There is no doubt. But how can we motivate the youth of today to get involved? What are some ideas, suggestions, or concepts that can help in this particular area? Mr. Taylor, you will be first to answer these questions. Well, thank you for the opportunity to answer the question, how our youth, um, how we can motivate our youth today to get involved in the humanitarian issues around the world. I think there's a couple of different ways, but two very important ways. One is via education and awareness about the needs and the issues facing communities around the world. And the way they can do that is by raising their awareness about, I believe very, very important knowledge is what the UN is doing with 17 sustainable development goals. I'm not gonna name all of them, but there's several issues that are really, really important to young people. One, of course, is poverty that happens around the world hunger, climate change, health and wellness, quality education, which I'm involved in, gender equality. All these things are very, very important. And to make them aware of these opportunities for helping solve some of these challenges that we face in the world by experiencing volunteerism, um, youth-led initiatives 
focus on social impact. I want them to emphasize the impact that their ex- actions may have. And it's important to show young people that their actions can make a difference in the lives of others. Let me give you an example. Young people who get involved with building schools in foreign countries, development countries, are, is really important. Having youth raise funds for humanity causes enable youth to show people that their actions can make the big difference in their lives. And so I think it's really, really important that we be great mentors to young people because they need the support since they're more than 50%, 30 or less people, uh, young people are half of the global population. So it's important that they get involved in solving the issues of, of our world. Young people are key players and build in a better world. And so there's no question in my mind that there are great examples of young people who we can point to, to motivate other young people. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of young people who are doing this around the world. There's one young lady you probably heard of, her name is Greta Thunberg. Greta is a Swedish environmental activist who's gained international recognition to raise awareness about climate change, which is another one of the 17 SDGs that are important for young people to be involved in. So that's a great example of a young individual who is making change and with her concept of, of improving the world through making people aware of climate change. Another really interesting individual is a Canadian activist by a guy by the name, a young man by the name of Craig Kohlberger is a co-founder of Free the Children, an organization that empowers young people to take action on global issues. He's inspired youth to get involved in the social change and his organization helps do this. So I think that there are great examples of young people who are doing things right now that will motivate other people who will be great mentors to young other young people for them to realize how important these issues are to themselves. So I think that today's youth will, who are involved because many of the issues that we're faced with today directly affect them and especially young women as well. So, my, you know, my view is that it's already happening. If you do some research in what's happening in the, in the United Nations, the development uh, groups, you'll see that young people have taken the lead and making this a better world. And we'll continue to do that. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Bridges, you will be up next with the same questions. And we have lots of comments coming in. So I know that our audience is invested here. Yes, he really did his research. Brian Taylor is known for that. He does his research and he does not disappoint with that. Coming out strong, gobsmacked. These topics are off the hook. So yeah, let's give it up to Avi for coming up with some more amazing topics. We've already had over 380 and we've got more with Second Chance and round two. So Mr. Bridges, how can we motivate the youth of today to get involved? What are some ideas, suggestions, or concepts that can help? With this, I, I, personally, I personally think that our screw ups are motivating them enough today. Our, the kids are able to see where we're making mistakes, how we're going wrong. Um, like in climate change, they're watching the oceans, you know, start to uh, get hotter. They're watching the uh, glaciers start to melt. Um, I think they're starting to see that. They're seeing that some of us are trying to change it, but like some of us are making electric cars, right? Now, um, I think. Most kids in this world today are realizing that there's more things in life than just making a buck. They want to see their grandchildren raise up. They, you know, their children's grandchildren be raised up. You know, it's like for me, you know, you know, for people that are my age, we know we only got like 35, maybe 35, 40 years maybe left. Uh, people like my son, who's 26 years old, um, he's very much so into climate change. So is my daughter, who's 27. They want, you know, things to be a lot different. They don't want to make the same mistakes that we made. You know, um, they're watching, you know, not just that, they're watching bigger storms today, bigger storms than ever. They're watching more, the hurricanes are much more massive than they've ever been in our entire life. The earthquakes are getting bigger in certain countries. 
they realize the mistakes that we are making, just like the mistakes that um, Japan and China made as far as only having one kid. Now they don't have enough young people to grow up there. Those countries are in trouble. They don't have enough young people growing up there. See, our country, you know, we're allowed to have as many kids as we want. So I think the kids of this country today are going to change a lot. For us to motivate them, I think it's just watching our mistakes, the way that we've messed up, the things that we've done wrong. I think for, like for my son, like, you know, I'm 31 years in sobriety. My son has an opportunity to not make the same mistakes I did by watching what I did to make those mistakes and not ever make those mistakes ever again himself. I think that, you know, the true key to it's, it's like, why, you know, they're able to like watch it in real time, which is, which is really amazing because, you know, they're watching global, they're watching, uh, you know, our, our global environment completely change. They're watching us lose uh, fish. Things are going instinct. We're losing animals. We're losing fish. We're losing things that we need to keep this country growing. What a lot of people don't even understand, and my son told me about this, and I didn't even know this, that almost 70% of our oxygen comes from the ocean, you know, and we're destroying the ocean by the stuff we're putting into the chemicals, the stuff we're allowing to backwash in it, you know, and he's very much so a kid that wants to, he speaks up about the environment and wants to help with that. I think for us to, we don't have to show them the way. I think they already know the way. They don't want to commit the same mistakes that we've made. They want to make changes to, to society today. You know, it's just like, um, I noticed that when it comes to racism, it's usually the older people who are racist. The younger people don't want to be like those older people anymore. They don't want to be, they want to be different. You know, um, my son has friends of all colors and they don't even see color. You know, um, it's unfortunately, you know, I see color because of what I was, how I was raised and what I was able to see. My son doesn't see that. He sees everyone as being the same. And um, I think they're making a change, Broadway, a big change in that situation. I think that in America, we're finding out that kids are leading the way in every single situation. Kids are the ones that are making the changes. They're making the sacrifices because they themselves don't want to be sacrificed to what we're doing to the planet. So they want to change things. They want to make things a lot better than we've ever seen them, you know. And um, the great part about it is, I, you know, I truly believe that, you know, my son, my daughter, uh, all their friends, they're making strides and changes today. My son um, is a computer uh, graphic designer. He designs stuff, but he's also talking about designing. Um, I think he said uh, uh, there's a guy who invented uh, it's able to pull it's able to pull out the air. It's able to pull water out the air. I don't know if you've seen that guy who didn't invent it. He's able to pull water off the air so that he can get the same kind of device to places that are, um, you know, a younger crowd. So people will have water, will have what they need, and we can stop the starvation around the world. You know, the unfortunate part about it is they're watching how we run our politics. You know, our politics are ran terribly. I remember growing up in the beginning, politics wasn't such a bad thing, but now, you know, you, know, you don't even want to know about it. You don't even want to tell anybody who you're voting for. And my son is proud to be who he is. He's proud to vote for whoever he wants to. So I believe that they're learning from our mistakes and they're going to change who we are and what they and what they represent to change this country to make it to what they want it to be. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Bridges. Now, we do have the option of rebuttals in this second chance bowl tournament. Mr. Taylor, do you have any rebuttals or questions for Mr. Bridges? I would just like to say that Todd makes it seem as though all kids are willing and able to get involved in changing the world. And, and it's not as easy as he made it seem. I think that it's, it's really, really important that young people who don't have the confidence to step forward to change the world have tremendous mentors, much like Todd. Uh, much like myself. And I think it's important that mentors uh, should focus on instilling a sense of empathy and compassion. And the big challenge for young people is that they're not given the opportunity to take that lead. Mm -hmm. So they need this mentorship that's gonna have them more confident in understanding what they have to do in order to make an impact and change in some of the challenges that all of us all of us face and they're not getting the support that they need in order to take the lead and i think that's the, the mentorship that we would bring to this youth that's hesitant of stepping forward is really important that mentorship and support is really really important uh, there's other concepts that we also have to use in order to get more youth involved 
and changing the world. And I think we have to do a better job of using the social media and technology to engage young, to engage young people, um, creating campaigns, challenging um, them in, in, on some online events, encouraging youth to get involved in all the humanitarian work that needs to, to and the, um, that issues need to be solved around the world. So, and we have to be really, I think we have to be a little bit more innovative in, in terms of offering rewards to help motivate youngsters. So Todd would make it believe that because his son and some of his friends are you know, willing to take the lead and make change that the majority of our young people are like you know, his, his family. And, and I would beg to differ. I, I would say that it's challenging also for young women uh, to, to deal with a lot of these issues because they're not given the platform or given the mentorship or given the uh, knowledge that they need in order to step forward and uh, be, you know, a humanitarian um, leader in, the, in this world. So it's not as easy as Todd made it seem that all the kids, because of the mistakes that grownups are making, that all kids or young people are ready to step out there and take the lead. In, in this way, I think we have to be a little bit more forward and, and come up with some different types of uh, uh, encouragement to get them to do that. For example, there's a, there's a, number, there's a number of things that are happening around the world. Uh, for instance, it, I think we have to challenge young people and giving them some, some rewards in order to get them to go out there and, and challenge grownups who don't want them to be in the lead to affect change. And for instance, in, um, in Africa, they put out a request for uh, this young group, this young uh, leadership group to uh, come up with some innovative ideas how they can impact their communities. And one of the things they were willing to do is that the winners of those ideas would get grants. So I think we've got to be, the concept I'm bringing forward is that I think we have to be a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about how we can help young people take the lead, even though the 50% of the global population is 30 and younger, that it's vital for them to be involved in, but they need us to give them that little encouragement, um, a little uh, motivation to be willing to go out and, and, and do what's that's necessary to make this a better world. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Bridges, we'll get to you in a moment, but first we do have an update on Lenny. He is still trying to sign in, but he does respect both of you greatly. So we would love to see him tonight. If that can't happen, hopefully we'll see him again, much like Al later in this tournament. But Mr. Bridges, do you have anything to say to Mr. Taylor based on? Oh, yeah. The people you picked, the people you talked about are not black minorities. They're not. The people you picked, did you talk about the girl who's doing that? So she's being supported by someone to be able to move forward. The girl from Sweden you're talking about, right? To be able to move forward. I'm in the trenches. I'm in the inner cities. I'm talking to these kids. If you can't relate with these kids on their level, they don't want nothing to do with you. The problem is they look at you, they look at me and say, all these old dudes, you know, blah, 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 what they know. That's how they look at us. Fortunately, I'm a gamer. I game with them. I talk with them. I know games. I know how to code. I know how to do computer stuff that they know how to do. Yes, it is a difference. People of our color are starting to get involved. I don't think you're in the, exactly in the trenches. I have youth centers all over the country. I'm talking to these kids on a regular basis. These kids want to make change. That's why, you know, for instance, if you, if you notice, even in drug addiction, it's affecting other races more than it's affecting ours now because they've learned from our mistakes. They saw us. They saw what was happening, and they don't want to go that route. See, so the kids that, that I know that I'm going around the country talking to, they want to make change because they don't want to be like we were. They don't want to be stuck like we were. That's why they don't want to even be like, like I say more things about black and white issues than they do. They don't see it the same way that I see it. They don't see color. They see people. We've already effected change on them. So when we go onto the field and we talk to them, me and my youth centers talk to them, these kids want to make a difference. 
And not only do they not have the opportunity, they have the opportunity because the opportunity is there. All you got to do is get you a cheap little computer. You can go on, find somewhere to go online, which is a Starbucks. You can do that today and learn about what you need to do and make choices and make better choices than we've made in our lives. These kids are smart now. They're not dumb. They're way smarter than us. These kids ask questions. They're not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to move forward and make things differently, you know, to make changes. The girl, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I watched the whole thing on that Swedish girl who was trying to, uh, I think, effectively, you know, stop that. But she's being supported by her parents. Not every one of our color has two parents in the household, you know. So they're usually starting to get it on their own. So if we go into those areas and just talk with them and they see us, I'm talking about people of color and people of other races, they see us and they want to know about it, but we just lead them to the water, but we can't make them drink. We cannot make them drink. We can lead them to the water and show them, but we can't make them drink. How we make them drink is from our examples of wanting to make a change. How we make it possible is that we're making the change. We're doing things differently. That's how we do it. I've been watching for a long time and all these youth centers that I have around the country, I'm doing the work it takes to talk to these kids. And I'm way older than a lot of these kids, you know, just like I'm sure you are. And, and what makes it easy for me is that I'm involved in the same kind of stuff they like. They like gaming. You know, they like, you know, playing, they, they like coding. You know, they like watching video games. They like playing video games. They like watching, you know, anime. I watch anime with these kids. I love anime. I watch it with these kids. So I'm able to, to talk on their level. Most adults, when they talk on, on a kid's level, they're talking over a kid's head. He don't want nothing to do with that kid. Zero to do with that adult. I mean, he wants nothing to do with them. That's when you can true. talk on them. Oh, man. Okay, but I've seen it all around my view centers. You can say, okay, let me ask you a question. How many kids have you helped out yourself personally in the last 20 years? How many do you think? More than you can imagine. In the youth the centers, you have helped them out? More than you can, more, more than you can imagine. It's amazing oh. that um, you can even, even question the impact that I've had on my well, But your question is saying career, that, that youth, what I'm saying, I'm making it seem too stuff. easy. I'm not making it seem too easy. I just know that the kids are different than we were. They're completely different than we were. They're not like we were anymore. Yes, They're smarter. They're better. Some, They're smarter some, and better. They want social change. They want climate change. They want things that we didn't even care about growing up. They want all these things to be done. And, and the way we can lead them there is by showing them, by our examples of what we're doing in our lives today to make changes. And they will make changes also in their lives, which will help others. That's why, because I've been able to make change in my life from drug addiction, I've helped thousands of people that are in the cities who have nothing, but they make change because they see that I can do it. They think, man, if this dude can do it, of course I can do it. You know, and, and that's how we make social changes by, by putting ourselves on their level, allowing, allowing them to see, hey man, this dude can do it, I know I can do it. And I'm not questioning what you do or what you know, I'm just questioning, you said I'm making it seem too easy. I don't feel that's the case. I've I never said don't. anything, was, I never even made the point that anything was easy. You said well, I'm making it seem it was too easy. The point that I made was that it's more challenging than you would make it seem. And you, you know, you're throwing some attacks at me on terms I of wasn't the, throwing the, it to you what that. kind of impact that I made on young people. Well, I wrote it down. Not, so as I a know, matter of fact, said, sir. I wrote it down. As, as a matter of fact, uh, young people need, need to be exposed. You know, I expose them to higher education. One of the programs that I work of with is that, uh, it, of course, is the black and brown kids that I do work with. Yep. I bring them to top universities in the United States in order to expose them to become leaders. But can they? In, get order, in, order, in order for them to do that, ask me that. They can have, they get in they that? Have they, can they, they, they have to be but exposed. But can they get in that, that university? Well. Pardon me. Can they get in that university? Can they get there? The whole point of introducing them to it young will make them inspired to be there and they will get there just like I got there. You know, I'm a poor kid, grew up in the projects. I got exposed at 15 during the summertime. It changed my life. You know, I had a chance to go to Princeton University because of that. So what I do right now, and your question about, you know. Were you approached by gangs to be in gang violence? Of course. As a matter of fact, I built schools right in the toughest part of no, Los no, no, no. Angeles. I'm talking about when you were growing Clanshaw up. In the Crenshaw district. When you were growing up. Right across, right across the street from uh, where Nipsey 
also got murdered. I, I lived in thought area, it was so impossible for us to build a school there. I built a school <laughs> there in right on crunch right on crunch I'm, I'm talking Boulevard. about when you when you when it's you were growing up when you were a kid well when, when i was growing up you got to remember you got to respect your elders and i'm way older than you you feel about that, that? When i was you? growing up gang you? activity was not as as prevalent as it is today so Wait, how old are you 73. but okay but it was very, my, my my it was very finish, excuse me mr bridges let me finish and i'll allow you to make your point of course, there's always going to be, for me, just like it was for you, people try to get me to go in a different direction, gang direction, even though there were a lot of gangs, it was, it was a negativity direction. Uh, but because I had good people around me, and that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make tonight. The point I'm trying to make tonight is that young people do need great mentors. They need the support, not everybody's getting that great mentorship or that support. And that's one of the things that I try to, that's one of the t things I try to do in my, in my entire life is to be able to be a good mentor to the young people, which I continue to do that today. I have a hundred hundred kids coming to Princeton, the black and brown kids. You went into the, you started talking about race and like this because I brought up an example of a young lady and there's an Asian kid that also, his uh, leading the way, his name is Joshua Wong. He's a Hong Kong uh, pro-democracy activist who started activism at a young age. He has been a prominent mm -hmm. voice actually for the political reform and human rights. So the point I was making and bringing out some of these examples is that that's what we need to do. We need to celebrate success stories. These are young success stories that young people need to know about. And also, for instance, Joshua has made an impact on other young people because he stepped out to be a leader and showing young people how to do things the, the way and which couldn't have an impact on other young people around the world. So that's the point I was making. I wasn't going into a race thing where Greta is one thing and there's Joshua, there's Craig. There's a no, I'm people just saying I was talking about bring I wasn't... To the table in terms of celebrating success stories is a way in which we can have an impact on a greater number of young people who are not willing to take the lead or take that action to make this a better world. So I do work for young black people, young brown people. I am one. I grew up in a tough neighborhood. Uh, education is, is, is very, very important. Even though I was a pro athlete, yeah, my there's... my thing was education, and I continue to do it. I continue to do it today, um, and motivating young people to shoot for their goals. I call it shoot for the goals. As as we talked about at the beginning of the show, the I led the NBA in three point shooting, so I developed a a a, a non profit group called Shooting for Your Goals, and the point is that you can be a great role model just like you are yes and we have just a like comment here that explains this very well how great both of you are addiction doesn't care about your race or financial status it hits people at every level regardless so both men have excellent points from different perspectives yeah yeah i and i am seeing some of these comments come in they're not all being pulled up on screen because there's a lot and we want to listen to you and not necessarily be distracted by them, but they are loving this. We're going back and forth. They are loving both of the points that you are bringing up. They are loving the perspective you have. So very much you two are resonating with our viewers. You are hitting them very hard. 15 years clean and sober. And I agree when I do outreach in the community with high school students, they want to talk to someone authentic who is honest about their experiences. Yep. So I would just make another point is that the question, I think the uh, crucial question was how can we motivate the youth of today to get involved? And the point I'm making, and I think the point Todd is making is that the kids are ready. You know, they're doing it now. And I don't agree with that. I That's think not what I said. The kids, the kids are smarter than we were back then. So a lot of kids some are. Some of them are and some of them aren't. 
you know, I can't agree that kids are smart or today's kids are smarter. They're making a lot of mistakes because they don't have that mentorship. They don't, you know, they don't have that support around. They don't have that great support network around. So I don't necessarily agree that the kids are smarter today. But I think the point I was trying to make in terms of how do we get, this just the question, how do we get the kids to be more motivated? Well, apparently, if the, all the kids were motivated, then that question would not even be asked. I answered the question too. And so, how do we, we, mo- how do we, how can the we motivate the youth of today to get more by involved in bringing humanity? Ourselves to their, the by world. bringing ourselves to their level, not rising above them, by showing them that we have done these same things. We have to be on their level. Which you talk about things that they like that they're doing to this very day. They watch anime. I like. Well, I watch anime too. You talk about anime, so that they want to make change. They want to make social change. But if you come at them as an adult, and their kids, they don't want to hear you. They gonna think you a square. That's what they gonna call you a square. So they gonna call well, you. They can call me whatever they want to call me. But the bottom line is, I'm exposing them to a world that they would never be exposed to. Okay. You know, and they need to. For instance, one of the things that's really, really important to me is providing a STEM education to our young people today. And this stuff may be over their head, just like it was over my head when I went to Princeton. But the exposure to that will have them griping to get to, you know, they can call they can call me a square or whatever they want to call me, but I'm exposing them to a world that they would never be exposed to. They but that's what my youth that's what my youth is doing. doing. But not Pardon only am I exposing them to a world they'll never see it again, or they're never, they're not gonna the kids probably see if they work hard to get there, but I'm also exposed to being on their level to be able to talk with me and show them that I'm like they were. And I we all want to make changes and they want to make changes also. Because they don't want to be nothing like us. They want to be better than us. And that's a key point. I'm happy they want to be like that. All right, we have a final last question for both of you. Brian, Todd, if your younger self could listen to yourselves tonight on 6-22-2024, what would they take away from this conversation? Mr. Taylor? I would think that I would think If you want me to read it again, I can. Yeah, read that again. Sure. If your younger self could listen to yourselves tonight on 6-22-2024, what would they take away from this conversation? So when you ask that younger self, so like I I reveal to everyone, I'm an, old, I'm an OG. <laughs> I'm 73, so how young do you want me to be? But in terms of my younger self, Listening to, I'm going to go back to when I was 15. Listening to this conversation is that I would really be encouraged to not have to be cool all the time to get kids to relate to me, other young people to relate to me. I just want them to be exposed to something that they may not be able to relate to because they're not always going to be in an environment where everything's going to be cool and uh, you know then not over their head um so i would think that this conversation is not and even with some of the things todd has made he's made some very very good points about you know, his journey in life and how he's impacting young people and he's done a tremendous job of of being a leader in, the, in that way. But I think also the point that I make is that I want to expose our young people to astrophysicists and, and uh, uh, world-renowned mathematicians. So they can shoot, perhaps be that, maybe not. But just giving them the opportunity to be exposed to that will change their lives. And Mr. Bridges, same question to you. If your younger self could listen to yourselves tonight on 6-22-2024, what would your younger self take away from this conversation? I would start probably asking people to 
explain things more instead of thinking that I knew it all and I could do it myself. You know, I think one of the biggest problems that happened um, growing up was I thought that uh, I didn't need an explanation because that's how our parents raised us. We didn't get explanations. <laughs> you got told to do it. You just did it. You know, and I think that I would ask more questions, you know, about something that I was interested in, you know, and um, and not be afraid to um, to get out and uh, be different than the other kids, not be afraid to be different than them. You know, know that I can, you know, make changes, make changes, not just, in, you know, in my life, but in their lives also. That definitely from hearing that, that's what I would think I would, I would be able to do. This was an impromptu question from Avi because Brian and Todd are very deep and thoughtful and they have shared their minds and hearts and souls with us this evening. They have different and varied perspectives and that is what we do here at TKN. We bring people together from different walks of life from all over the world to have these conversations so we can have this respectful discussion and you two certainly epitomize that this evening. The voting will be getting underway shortly and it is going to be top. I'm sure the engine out there and all of our fans and viewers and all of your fans and viewers are already agonizing over which decision to make because that was so deep and so wonderful to listen to both of you Really glad I'm not voting tonight. <laughs> Engine, please I'm give Brian and Todd a hand because they are real, genuine, intelligent, and so very gracious. I could not agree with that anymore. And thank you both for spending your Saturday evening with us. Coming in to kick off this second chance bowl match with us. So, Engine, start getting your votes. And now we are voting. We are going to start with our friends in the back. Let us bring in the newly minted round two competitor, McKenna. Hi. Well, first of all, the round of applause <laughs> that you guys deserve. Um, that was that was very intense. You guys definitely brought a lot of passion to the topic. And I think there is a possibility and probably a truth in that both of your perspectives are true it both can be valid and uh it's weird to say that it feels a little sacrilegious but both can be valid and so i think though because i do have to choose i think what it comes down to is well i think that the kids are learning from their the mistakes of the people before them i I think we always kind of see this pendulum swing like when you're trying to not be your parent and then and then you do the opposite of what your parent does and then that affects the child you have negatively and then they do the opposite it's just a cycle so i think overall i don't know if that will always offer the solution because there needs to be more avoidance there so I think I'm going to go ahead and give my vote for Brian because I think both of you touched on how important mentors are and uh, I think Brian really drove that home for me. So thank you guys. It was really a great discussion. Thank you for joining us, McKenna. We will see you in round two. And one or two of these gentlemen may be your competition there. Engine, go ahead and start getting those votes in on YouTube and on Facebook. We will bring in Howard momentarily. And then it is all you voting for these two wonderful competitors because the winners are all of us. Everyone here listening to Brian and Todd on all of our platforms, in all of the groups, on all of the pages, however you found the green room and the celebrity tournament and TKN, thank you so much. We are all winners here tonight because of this amazing conversation from this amazing topic that was so thoughtful. McKenna? Thank you so much for voting. And now let us bring in Howard Collado to give his vote. Again, applaud to uh, both of you, uh, both of you guys. A Just an honor and privilege to have both of you guys. And that was the equivalent of, of Hearns and Hagler, pretty much, what you guys were doing. Um, amazing. Um, I loved, Brian, what you said, that the, the youth, they need, they need mentors. They, they need to see examples of people doing what we're talking about. 
right? And that's what's going to inspire them. Uh, Todd, you talked about, you know, they, you need to also understand their world and, and be able to speak their language, right? In your example, whether it's anime or, or video games, right? Once they see that you're able to, to understand that, then they open up. Um, I'll share this as a uh, as an after school teacher uh, in a middle school. I've actually seen what Todd is talking about. And I'll give you a quick example. I had two students who love K-pop and they show me this, this K-pop, you know, uh, this band. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, uh, SWV and, and, and TLC were doing this in the 90s. But if I tell them that, they're like, who? Right? So I take a moment to listen and to hear and appreciate what they're doing. That opens the door then for me to be like, well, if you like this, you should check out that. And there's something powerful about them seeing me take a moment to try and understand their world. Then that opens up a door. Uh, Brian, you said something very powerful. You said in order to expose them, you said you have to expose them to something new. But what I wrote is uh, in order to expose them to something new, they have to see that you're also attempting to understand where they're coming from as well. So, again, powerful arguments uh, from both of you. I think you guys should probably work together. Uh, but, <laughs> you're right. But also my vote's going to go uh, to Todd. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Howard. Engine, get those votes in. Everyone on YouTube, everyone on Facebook, get those votes in right now, please, for us. It is your time. We are turning this over to you. The stakes are high. These two are hungry for the pride and the prize. $13,000. A trip or two to Greece. The Tom Sizemore Memorial Cup and the honor of being the very first Mr. And Mrs. or Miss TKN. That is a lot right there, all on the line in this tournament. Chad is voting for Todd. He won you in the end. Thank you so much for, for being here and voting tonight, Chad. We appreciate that. Keep keep those votes coming in. And then this is on you. You voted these two back in. Let's see who you are going to vote for to advance. Keith says, wow, really tough. But I think I have to go with Brian by a margin of 51% to 49%. That is another one for Brian. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Keith. Gwen is also going with Brian tonight. Thank you, Gwen. Appreciate that. Keep those votes coming. I know you're out there. We know you've seen them. So let's get those in. And if you think you've already voted, get those in again in case you have to refresh a little bit or haven't seen it. So please keep those coming through. We've got our, our viewers on YouTube, our viewers on Facebook. Let's have those votes coming because this is all on you. You get to decide. Lester is voting for Todd. Thank you so much, Lester. We are so glad you are with us this evening for both of these matches and here with us voting for Todd. Ramon, I have to go with Brian. Okay. This is going to be tight. I can already tell. Pete, I'm voting for Todd. You have to find common ground. The generational gap is just too big. And yes, anime brings people together. Would you like to know what shows you're watching? Oh. Pete, <laughs> I'm watching my hero. Agreeing with you right now? <laughs> my hero, Demon Slayer. I'm watching a few of them. <laughs> Brutal, but I vote for Todd. However, Brian should be put through as well. Not fair. Great job, Jen. Thank you so much for your vote, Patrick. And it is true. Both of them did amazing, amazing work tonight. Allison is voting for Todd. Thank you, Allison, for voting and being here as well for, vo for both matches. And we have another vote. One Mr. Lou Frigno is still with us this evening. He is voting for Brian Taylor. Thank Lou, you. Lou, I've been knowing you all my life, Lou. I went on tour, I went on tour with Lou for, like, uh, for a long time, for like three years with Lou. Wait, can you tell us, give us a little bit more information about that while our vent, our engine keeps yeah, going? Me, and, me Scott Bell, Lou Frigno traveled around the United States. And did teen shows like Lou, like me, I would sing, Scott Bell would sing, and Lou Ferrigno would flash his muscles. <laughs> I held the elevator door of a plane for him. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, you can't do it. Now you get arrested for doing something like that. Uh, no. <laughs> but back then you could do it. In the 70s you could do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been so much fun to be on board with Todd Bridges and Lou Ferrigno. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm gonna tell you Lou was, I, I was doing a, a, a Battle Network Stars with Lou, and Lou is fast, man. I was fast, and I'm running, and I hear, doo, doo, doo. I look behind me, he's right on my tail. I'm like, oh my gosh. He has fast steps, man. Lou, Lou is in round two of this tournament. How would you feel if you drew him, if you if you advance tonight, and then if you draw him as your- I drew Lou, I mean, if I drew him, I just gotta draw him. You know, because Thor, Thor can beat, the Hulk, so. Oh. <laughs> Thor won the last battle. Thor won the last battle. Yes. That is great. We have so many different connections that have formed from this tournament. Ali votes for Brian. We've got another vote for Brian here. Let's see, who haven't we heard from yet? Lou is definitely a force to be reckoned with. And if we've seen anything tonight, so is Todd and so is Brian Taylor. Hillary is voting for Todd. Thank you so much, Todd, for joining us. Uh, sorry, thank you so much, Hillary, for joining us. Thank you too, Todd, for joining us and Mr. Okay, Taylor. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, as I stated earlier, we are the winners here tonight because of this wonderful conversation you provided us based on this topic. Dion is voting for Todd. We meet them where they are and help them rise to a healthy life. Thank you so much, Dion, for that vote. Who are we missing? Let's see, Katie, I haven't seen a vote from you. Ooh, this just in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Tobolowski, via phone, votes for Mr. Bridges. And wouldn't mind seeing Todd in round two to make it definitive. Oh. Todd, did you get that? Yes. We have a phone vote from Mr. Tobolowski. Oh. For you. Oh, Tom, thank tonight. you. And he would not mind seeing you in round two to make I it definitive. Know. He's coming trying to get me. I know he is. <laughs> would you would you like a rematch? Would I like would definitely like a rematch. Yes, <laughs> I lost by one vote. One I vote. Know. <laughs> I definitely want to rematch to him, for sure. Your match set the tone for this entire tournament. Losing by one vote in the very first match, insane. Yeah. Totally told us exactly how heightened this would be, how intense each match would be, yeah. and bring it. We have a vote for Jill from Jill for Brian and also for Phil from Brian. This is close. We are currently tied at eight a piece. Todd versus Steven part two. It would definitely be fire and rock. I see both of those emojis there, Mr. Colado. I agree with you. Whew. There are no tiebreakers. There are no ties in round two. So this could potentially be the last time people ties in the second chance bowl tournament and whew, wouldn't that be incredible in round two in the event of a tie a judge or viewer will break that tie so let us count it down 10 oh, nine any last minute uh, uh, no, no. Last second vote? eight <laughs> Uh -huh. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the result is with that. Are we ready? Are we ready to hear the official yeah. result? <laughs> <laughs> Think based on the private chat, some of us know what this is going to be and how this is going to play out, but let's see what Mr. Klein types in. Todd Bridges, 32. Hmm. Brian Taylor, 
32. Congratulations to both of you. Welcome to round two, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Bridges. Good job, Good job, man. Good job. Okay, I just don't cool. want to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see you, Brian. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I want That's the guy me. to beat me by one vote. I want him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys get the OG up past his bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> this is even more rare. A rare double identical vote tie. And if you wow. didn't see your comments pulled up, Sometimes we have to refresh a little bit, and Facebook has been giving us a couple of issues last week via StreamYard, but that is okay. We got all your votes in there. This is amazing and wonderful. Congratulations to both of you on a well <laughs> He's a tough competitor. He was hitting no, no. me on the ropes for a minute. He was, huh, huh, huh. I was like, oh, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> But then that music started playing that Eye of the Tiger. I had to come back. 